what to do if a man is not willing to change. He is wanting to do 50-50. He doesn't want to provide. He doesn't want to protect. What can I do? This question I've been hearing a lot this week, so I'll be happy to answer that question. So first of all, my friends, whether you're married to a wife, whether you're married to a husband, whether you're in a relationship, one thing, there's a golden rule you have to remember that no one, no one ever changes overnight. It's impossible. Even if you think you watched me uh, five times live, or even if you saw 20 of my videos, or even if you heard 20 psychologists, it takes an average between one to two years for people to truly change if they want to. Most of the time, people don't want to change. But if you start working on yourself, whether you're a husband or a wife, as you are changing, your partner going to start mirroring you. So if you see a husband who doesn't want to provide, protect, and lead a relationship and marriage, by the way, a boyfriend not supposed to provide and protect. Only husband's supposed to do that. Because some women think, well, he's my boyfriend. He needs to provide and protect. No, he's not responsible for you. When he's married, that's a different story. You got to get a man not going to be inspired to lead, provide, protect if you are still working, if you are having a masculine energy, criticizing him, putting pressure on him or constantly telling him, well, you're a bad man. You're not providing. You're not protecting. You're not helping me with kids. You're not helping with anything. The moment you do that, you kill all the inspiration in men to help you, support you, and protect you. So now let me read the questions. He asked me to come to his house to teach him swimming. I am a swimming teacher. Uh, for the third date, I really feel uncomfortable. Of course, you shouldn't go to his house on the third date and teach him how to swim. No, no, no. House is already a very intimate space. If you're engaged, if you're in an exclusive relationship, the man told you that he loves you, um, you saw that he is serious, he is a provider and protector type of guy who tells you that I want to marry you in a year, I want us to have kids in two years. You had all of this conversation and he said, I don't want to see anybody else and he's saying, I want to get engaged and he has serious intention. That's a different story. You can go to his house and you can teach him how to swim, but that should be eight months, nine months later in the relationship. Third date, going to the house, of course, he's just thinking how beautiful or sexy or attractive you are. And he's attracted to you physically, to your body. But he's not in love with you. He is not, his soul is not connected to you. That takes time. So no, my friends, don't rush. <laughs> really good question. Um, how does pregnancy affect a marriage? My friends, by the way, with regards to pregnancy, you have to discuss how many children you want to have while you're dating. After you got exclusive, you start talking about, I'm curious, how many kids would you like to have? And one of my girlfriends right now been separated for almost four years, and they're actually going through divorce. And she always dreamed to have two kids, but husband never wanted to have two kids. After first one, he was done. And then he made a favor to her. He's like, fine, we're going to have a second child. But he was never attached to second child. He's never was in tune with their second daughter. And then after they start going through separation process, he said, well, I never wanted to have a second child. And that's a deal breaker, my friends. You got to discuss what is your religion background? What is your faith? What are you Democrats and Republicans if it's important to you? Uh, how many kids you want to have? Whether he, you will be a stay-at-home mom or working part-time? All of that you have to discuss in the first three months to six months. Uh, first three months, obviously, you're having a honeymoon stage and that might be too fast to discuss. But again, you can even discuss that earlier. And if you see a man wants to have five children and you want to have only one, that could be a deal breaker or the other way around. Or maybe he's Republican and you cannot stand Republicans. You're a Democrat. That could be a problem. Um, 
different religion, religious backgrounds. That you should also discuss after three to four months as you're starting to become more and more serious with each other because all of that, especially also money, if you wanted to be pregnant and stay home mom while you're raising your kids and then maybe start working part-time and he wants you to work and do 50-50, that's a definitely a deal breaker. So all of those things you gotta discuss before that. And so how the pregnancy affects the marriage it really depends if a man wants to have kids and maybe you don't or the other way around. And so if a man wants to have a child and you want to have a child, it's going to be a really extraordinary and beautiful journey. But if one of you doesn't want to have a child and you're pregnant, that could be a deal breaker. And if a man doesn't want to have children, doesn't want to provide, protect and lead, ladies, it should be the biggest red flag and you should run away. You should discuss that and you see he doesn't want to provide and protect when you're going to get married. He doesn't want to have children. Why would you want to marry? Leave. And same thing should be for a man. A man dates you and you're saying, I don't want to have kids. And to him, it's very important. Then leave. Because these are big things. But normally people date, have sex, and then they start talking six months, a year later, and they're like, oh, wow, he doesn't want to have children. He doesn't want to provide. He doesn't want to protect. Too late. Too late now to talk about it. And most of the time, that's how everybody does nowadays in the modern society. Asking those questions happens in the marriage. And then it's like, wow, who did I marry? And we have all the problems because you miss the steps talking about it during the dating process. And that's why you should watch my long lecture called Six Stages, How to Create Happy and Lasting Relationship on YouTube. It's, it's hour and a half to two hours. And you will understand on which stage you should discuss certain topics. It will help you tremendously, especially if you're dating. And if you're already in a relationship, you will see which steps you missed. And that's why your relationship or marriage is struggling now. Bad boys bring excitement. Yes, bad boys bring excitement, but bad boys are with you until you're excited to them. And then six months later, he met a prettier girl, more interesting, and he is not interested in you, with you anymore. And he will leave. And that's the danger of bad boys. Bad boys have one agenda, one agenda only. What do you think it is? To have sex with you. And then once he had sex with you, few months later he starts losing interest and he will be gone so do you want excitement or do you want a serious commitment where a man respects you loves you nurtures you and takes care of you the choice is yours my friends my boyfriend wants to provide but we're currently experiencing cost of living crisis in the uk any advice now i will tell you something that my professor years ago would say and you either take it or not. The choice is yours, my friends. But he would say, if a man is not able to provide and protect and have to provide and protect also for your coming, you know, future coming kids, that could be any moment. You could get pregnant and in a year, in nine months, you could have kids. He is not even supposed to be in a relationship. You got to take it this serious. And if you're like, oh, poor him, we're having a global crisis. We're in South Africa or UK or France. The economy is bad. Meaning you're an insecure woman and you want to baby your man like he's a baby boy son. You got to stop doing that. Only insecure women, only convenient, convenient women treat men like they're babies. He's a man. He got to go provide and protect. If he needs to, he can get a second job, a third job. If he wants to have a serious relationship and get married and be with you. And if not, bye-bye. That's how you got to have a dignity. No, you're not going to go work and give him 15% because, oh, my poor man, economy is bad. Respect and love yourself. Stop doing this nonsense feminism, at least on my channel. If you don't like it, it's okay. <laughs> you can leave. But we gotta have the rules. Rules and duties for a woman and rules and duties for a man. Yeah. My boyfriend not telling his parents about my pregnancy and we are together. What should I do? 
You're not gonna like this, but I'm gonna tell you. Um, if a man doesn't take you to his parents, if a man doesn't introduce you to his friends, if a man doesn't take you out to show you to his um, community or just doesn't take you out, all of these are red flags. And what I typically recommend is for you for whole week to dress up, get sexy, have a great time with him, Put your best makeup, best clothes, give him the taste of you. And then in a week say, honey, either you take this or we are done. I'm going my way. After a week, you sit down and say, honey, either you take me to your parents and we're going to take this relationship to the next level because I am the future mother of your kids or it's okay. I'm going to raise our child by myself, but I'm not going to allow you to... Um, hide me and disrespect me that I don't matter just like that so let him make a choice give him time after you said that wait and if he's not willing to do that it's okay bye bye you will be okay but don't allow your man after he already made you pregnant you have his child in your belly to put you down like that because these are already red flags first he's not gonna take you to parents next thing he's not gonna help you financially next thing he's not gonna marry you next thing he's not gonna help you with the rent and things like that and that's how it accumulates put a stop to it right now if he's not willing to get married and take you to his parents and this relationship you can raise the child and then you can attract a man who will be provider and protect and you're not gonna do those mistakes anymore put a stop don't allow this how to deal with a husband who is depressed and isn't taking charge so i'm having to take charge no my friends mm -mm -mm. you're reminding me of my girlfriend my girlfriend her husband lost a job four years ago and so they they couldn't pay for the mortgage on one of her salaries so she got the second job and then the second job uh, she was able to take mortgage and they were fine and then her mother got sick back in Russia so now she got a third job to support her mother back in Russia and you see what happens do you think her husband found a job four years now he's still not working and he's depressed and you know why a man gets depressed you see for us we ladies are born for happiness and love men are born to conquer themselves and then for happiness and love. Their number one duty to conquer themselves physiologically, psychologically, and then spiritually. So if you take that away from him by being in charge, you are killing his spirit. You are not allowing him to become a true man. That's why I say, ladies, feminism is killing the family unit. No relationship can stand on the feminism because if a woman works and takes charge, she is in a masculine energy, she basically has a balls between her legs, excuse my language. And with that attitude, a man takes a feminine energy and then he becomes depressed and then he complains how life is miserable and terrible. And you are becoming like his mama, who's like, oh, poor boy, it's okay, stay home. I'm gonna be in charge. I'm gonna pay bills. I'm gonna even paint the house and fix the roof cut it out my friends cut it out allow your man to be a man and how you can do that is by cutting down your hours working hours and then you say i have a headache honey i don't want to go to work today oh my back hurts i cannot do full-time job anymore the moment you're gonna start laying down on the sofa for three weeks a man gonna get up and go to work that's the only way it works. Talking is cheap. Man looks at your action. If you are complaining, but you are continuing going to work and paying bills, no man will get up to go to work. So I hope you understand this.